Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now a while back a subscriber sent me this, a PacCom Tiny2 Mark II Packet Radio TNC, which I believe I use for testing on a Packet BBS. However, the internal battery has now gone flat. Considering this is over 30 years old, it's not surprising. Now before we go any further, let me just explain very quickly what Packet Radio is. In its current form, it's mainly used for APRS today, which is a position reporting system used by ham radio enthusiasts. But back in the day when dinosaurs walked the earth and internet was not heard of, packet radio was used to send text, messages and files between computers over the airwaves. Just like the old-fashioned dial-up modems which connected between your computer and phone line, TNCs, otherwise known as packet modems, were connected between your computer and a radio transceiver. Now this allowed direct connection between stations or two bulletin board stations known as BBSs. Now these stored information such as news, weather reports or even personal messages. Now I am in range of a BBS which is still active today, so I wanted to see if I could get the Tiny2 working with my Yaesu FTM300 radio. So the first thing to do is change the internal battery. Now, although I can use this without the internal battery working, it just saves having to re-enter all the settings every time I turn it on. Now, removing the old battery was fairly easy, but after removing the battery, I noticed the mounting lugs appeared to be welded onto the battery. The replacement 3 volt lithium battery that I got from Amazon did not have these mounting lugs, so I opted to solder a couple of wires onto the new battery, cover it in tape, and then solder the wires to the main PCB. That's not exactly a neat job, but hey, it works. Now it was time to make a cable which goes between the Tiny2 and the FTM300 transceiver. Of course, you can use any transceiver you want if it covers the band you want to use. The FTM300 has a data port on the back, which provides audio in and out, a ground, PTT control, and of course a squelch or DCD control. The same pinouts are on the Tiny2, however, it uses a different connector. So I ordered a data cable for the FTM300, which has bare wires on one end and a connector on the other. And for the TNC side, I just ordered a MIDI cable from Amazon and cut the connector off. Matching each wires with the connections was pretty easy to do. I just had to look in both manuals and match up the connections. So now it's time to turn it on and connect it all up and see if it's working. The DB9 serial connection on the back of the Tiny2 is how we will communicate between the computer and the Tiny2. My computer doesn't have a serial port, so I use the USB to serial converter cable. This works great and shows as an available COM port within Device Manager. Because I'm going to be using KISS mode on the TNC, I'll use a program called PuTTY. There's a terminal program which allows me to have direct connection to the TNC by entering commands like a command line terminal. Now one thing I didn't mention before, but let's briefly talk about, and that's the COM port and radio settings. The serial board rate and TNC radio board rate are independent and different. The serial board is the speed of communication between your computer and the Tiny2, and the radio board rate is the rate between the TNC to another TNC over radio waves. Now these can be defined on the Tiny2 by setting jumpers on the main board. Now some TNCs you may be able to set this within software, but the Tiny2 is done by hardware switching. Typically you would set a radio board of 1200 for VHF and possibly 9600 on UHF, but this all depends on what you're using it for and I presume what country you're in. Now let's start PuTTY and connect to the Tiny2 via serial. When I power on the Tiny2, I'm presented with a welcome message. Once I see this, I know that the TNC is configured as far as communicating with the computer. Now I'll just tune to 144.800, which is the APRS frequency, and once it receives a packet, it should be displayed here in the PuTTY terminal window. So now that I've successfully received the packet and seen its data, I'm now going to change the radio's frequency to that of the BBS node that I know is in range. Now we can either wait for the beacon to appear or try and connect to it directly. Before connecting, I want to make sure the Tiny2 has retained its settings after I change the battery. Now I previously set my call sign using the my call command. 
So I'm just going to type that in, hit enter, and it should now show me the program call sign. If we now go ahead and type the connect command, which is connect GB7MNK, the Tiny2 will now transmit the required packet using the FTM300. Now, if GB7MNK receives this connection request, it will send the connected state. You'll also see the con light on the front of the Tiny2 illuminate to show that you're connected. Different BBSs will have different features, but most of them should have a form of message list. Of course, this is a bulletin board after all, so it should have some that we can read. Using the list command, we can grab a list of the messages or bulletins. Now from this list, we can then read an individual bulletin. Now remember that these bulletins are not coming to my computer via the internet. It's purely over RF. However, the actual bulletins themselves may have been populated on GB7 MNK via the internet from another BBS but internet access is not required for this system to work. Now there are other options normally available, such as a conference room or chat room. This allows users to join the conference and chat together just by typing messages. You can also send direct messages just to specific users via the BBS. In fact, if the BBS is internet linked to another BBS, then you can actually send a message via another BBS. And if Digi is enabled, you can hop between different nodes to communicate to somebody further away. In fact, my Tiny2 TNC has its own built-in mailbox, so if somebody connects to me, they can leave me a PM or a message, and that's without the computer even being turned on. As long as the TNC is connected to the radio, the TNC will do the rest. Now, legally here in the UK, you must have an NOV if you want to leave your packet station unattended. However, you do not need an NOV, which is a notice of variation to your license, if you only run your packet node or BBS while you're in the shack or near your radio. Now, if you want to experiment with packet radio but do not own a TNC, then there are some other solutions, free solutions as well. Now, a few models of transceivers, especially the Kenwood models, actually have TNCs built into them. You can also use something called a software modem, which is a piece of software that emulates a TNC, but on your computer. Also, there's Direwolf, which is a great TNC emulator for the Raspberry Pi and other operating systems. Now, unfortunately, packet radio kind of went extinct when the internet came publicly available. However, as mentioned earlier, packet radio is still used globally today, specifically for APRS. There has been a few user groups around to try and revive this technology especially in the UK. There are some Google groups which you can join if you'd like to learn more and converse with other packet users. If we had nodes going up and down the country with Digi enabled, then that could potentially provide packet radio coverage across the UK, especially if Digi is enabled. Anyway guys, there you go, my PatCom Tiny2 TNC that was donated to me by a fellow subscriber a couple of years ago. Nice to see that it's working, and changing the battery wasn't too hard. Now, if you guys still use packet radio, then please let me know down in the comments below on what equipment you use and what you use it for. Do you use it just for APRS or do you have a node or BBS set up? Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.